Marconi winner, and I'll be working with parts and pieces of the face today. To make great faces, we need to understand a simple and easy way to work with the features. We'll be working in oil. I'm going to make a little more information for those lashes. I'm just going to drag them out one more time. This is like when you're painting landscape, you want to paint in the direction the tree grows. So you want to paint in the direction that the lash grows if you're going to add them. And let me just darken this a little bit right here. Because we started with a very basic shape, but what we want to do is, you know, adjust and adjust and adjust until you get it just the way you want it. And I'm going to get a bigger brush and just soften all of this. Now the paint will stay wet depending on which brand you're using, paint, the oil paint should stay wet for a couple of days, if not a couple of weeks, depending on the brand. And you want that so that you can go back in and adjust things, just like I'm doing now. So that's the way to start an eye. And I'm going to put the second one here. We may not finish it, but we're going to put it because in reality, when you're painting, you really do want to be working on both at the same time. For the child, there's an eye width between the eyes, and they will seem much wider than on the adult. We'll do just some of the same exercises we did earlier in describing the eye. I'm going to put some of this shadow mixture right here into the eye socket area. And we always work from dark to light in oil. It helps to establish um, shadow and light. Notice the eyes, ch the child's eyes are considerably larger. Open. I'll put shadow in it. Shadow here. Cleaning the brush. I'll add some skin tone above. And I'm going to go even lighter. Against the white paper, the, the colors seem to be considerably darker, which is one of the reasons working on tone is such a lovely way to work when you're working with oil. darken this color just a little bit and I'm going to use it under the lip to cut back that little area that's going to be between the teeth. We can show this. Would you do this in a painting? Probably not. But because we have a massive giant close-up, we can show it and talk about it. So this is the division of the teeth. I'm doing dark to light. It's the way I normally paint oil. It's very traditional. I'm going to put the upper part of the lower lip on. And I'll use a little contour, a little form stroke here. And I'll come back and put the, the highlight on in just a moment. But the next value that's going to go on is the teeth. I'm going to take this grayer, greener tone that's over here, and I'll probably put it right here. Now, that's going to look really dark. Don't fret. It'll look really dark for a moment. We're going to go from dark to light, even with the teeth. And of course, that looks terribly dark against the, the white of the paper. If we were working on tone, it wouldn't show up 
quite as dramatically. You notice how I was shaping the teeth as I went along and reshaping that fleshy area above it in the gums. The light on the teeth will be just the same color with some added white. And if it doesn't show up the first time, I'll lighten it again and do it again. Oops, I lost one of the divisions. Hang on. Colors of the face. There are zones where the upper area in the forehead is a little more golden. The center area is a little warmer, so I'm going to add a little bit of this warmth to it. And the lower part is a little, a little uh, cooler. The advantage of having the pre-mixed pre, uh, colors is that you can work on structure and not hold yourself back, taking time to mix color. Adjusting color is so much easier than stopping and going and stopping and going. I'm going to take a little of this color out, put it here. Cool it off with a little bit more of the cobalt blue, and I'm going to add a touch of white to it. A little too much, I'm going to go back. Mm 